Hi, Pat Love back with one more goodie. This is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 45. That's it. I want you to hear this. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sending rain on the just and on the unjust. Now, that almost seems like the impossible dream. It's almost like, Jesus, is you crazy? You tell me to do some crazy mess like that. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, God does not, he never, let me say this in a better way. He never requires anything of us that he is not able to empower us to do. If he requires us, he will empower us. If he demands it, he will enable us. I mean, no matter what it is, if, if it's part of his commandment, the Holy Spirit, God's power, his enablement will give you the ability to do what you're, what's impossible for you to do naturally. That's the one thing that is so fair about God, no matter what. Can you imagine if you are on the road? I'm going to give you some scenarios. If you're on the road and you know how to change a tire and somebody did you wrong, I mean, did you wrong, you, you let your imagination go down memory lane. You'll pick somebody out. You don't have to go far. And you see that person, the one that gets under your skin, the one who, who uh, gets you hot up, up under the collar and brings smoke out your nose and steam out your ears. Yeah. And you see them on the freeway. It's raining. It's cold. They don't have a coat on. And they're out there stuck trying to change their tire. Now, the uh, natural emotion of a human being, I don't care how saved they are, the natural emotion would be, or the initial might be, <laughs> yeah, serves your butt right. But there is a God who is able, mm. and I mean he can turn your heart into a flick, and before you know it, you're pulling over, Praying every step of the way, oh God, help me. Help me, Lord. Don't let me feel any anger with this person. Help me keep that forgiveness working now, Lord. Keep it going. And you get out that car and you change their tire for them and put a raincoat on them. Tell them, go sit in the car, you got it. And they'll be shocked. They might think when you're coming that you're gonna that you're gonna hit them upside the head. <laughs> With their tire iron. But no, you get down and change their tire. There's a scripture that says, well, I, no, I got to say it my way. Because sometimes it reads better in my mind. And it might help you hear it better too. Can you imagine how much, how many coals of fire it would drop on a person's head? Who knows they've done you wrong. With eyewitnesses around too. And here you come, of all people, here you come. Their own brother, sister, mother, father may have had an excuse. I ain't coming out there in that weather. You just better handle it. I told you to change that tire. And here you come, the one they stabbed in the back. And you're there to help them. You may not have a lot to say because you may be doing all you can just to do that. But you do it. You get back in your car and you drive away. Now, I'm feeling this right now. What you don't realize, when you do something like that, that's called the sacrifice of obedience. 
when you give your body a living sacrifice unto the Lord, holy and acceptable unto him, he rewards you richly. He will reward you and he does reward. You might get in that car and it might blow you away as you drive off and feel the presence of God all over you. Or you feel his smile or his favor and then something phenomenal will happen to you that week or that month. And you know God was happy even before the blessing came because you felt it all over you. God doesn't leave those kind of sacrifices unnoticed. He doesn't leave it unacknowledged. You will know that God was watching because he'll let you know. Now, you don't have to go to heaven to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He'll tell you that right here in the land of the living with every sacrifice of obedience. When you obey till it hurts, God will never leave that unrewarded. He just has a way of letting you know <laughs> that he's so proud of his baby. Mm. Okay, next thing. Here's a scenario that really happened. I knew a woman. She was probably... Uh, in her late 70s, late, late 70s, 78, 79, pushing 80. And this woman was, you could tell that when she was unsaved, she was part of the wild, wild west. She was wild, woolly, and totally out of control. And here she was a Christian, but a semi-carnal Christian. Saved, though, honestly saved, just she had to come a whole lot further to get where you are. You might have only had to jump two steps. She had to jump a hundred miles. Yeah, to get halfway where you are. And she has a whole lot further to go to get where you are today. But because God is so fair and understanding, he takes all that into consideration. So here we are. The woman shares about how her father was a deadbeat dad how her father was abusive to her mom and how they never ever really got close because once he left the kids and mom was you know they were on their own now he's in his 90s yeah he's pushing 100 he's sick and i got to say it streetwise and he po yeah po is a piss ass now brother man comes ringing her doorbell. This woman hadn't heard from this man in, in over half her life. Now, there have been a few moments of interaction throughout, but very few and far between. He comes knocking on her door, ringing her doorbell in the middle of the night, maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night, 7 or 8, whatever, but it's dark. And she wondered who was knocking on her door. And nobody called and said, can I come over? Unannounced visit you get a little suspicious of. Well, she peeps through the curtain. And to her surprise, what's he doing here? Now her dander is rising because she's angry. She still got a lot of that hurt. All those emotions start welling up. And she said, oh, God, what should I do? Now she acknowledged the right one. Acknowledge God in all your ways, and he will direct your path. So, she acknowledges him while she's feeling, while she's processing, she's acknowledging. And she felt, just open the door and let him in. So she opens the door. She's not much on conversation, but she's doing it as much as she can. And he lets her know he's dying. He has nowhere to go. And if she would give him half the chance, he really needs somebody to take care of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Despitefully use and persecute. I mean, 
She had to do good to this man. Now, she didn't have to because God won't make you. But she chose to do things God's way. When God says here that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. What he's saying is the, when the sun shines, it's not just shining on you and me. Us little holy folks, his little favorites. Yeah, I'm being silly. It's rising on the rapist. It's also rising on the drug dealer. It's rising on the Italian mafia. It's rising on the illegal, yeah, the illegal uh, uh, pushers of drugs, the rich, the elite that push the drugs into the poor, the black, and the Latino neighborhoods. Yeah, it's also rising on them. It's also rising on the drug trafficker. Hmm, interesting, huh? Well, what God is saying is, you can find somewhere in your heart to do good, just do it. That is what you call a sacrifice. And those kind of sacrifices mean a whole lot more to God than a burnt calf or a baby sacrifice, which is not allowed, but you know how people used to do. Those kind of sacrifices carry a lot of weight with God because he knows how much it took for you to do it. You hear me? Okay. It also says he sends rain on the just and on the unjust, basically, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust, which means everybody gets some. The good, the bad, the ugly, everybody. Not just you. And if he's willing to do it, and he is kadistu holy, which means without defect. And you and I are jacked up, baby. I don't care how holy we try to live, we're jacked up. If God does it, we almost have no right to refuse to do it. Now, of course, if there's a threat or a pending threat, then yeah, you use wisdom. You don't do it for just everybody. But if a person is humbly coming to you and there is no harm and you know it and you have it within your means, even if they're meager means, trust me when I say God's taken note and he knows how to make the adjustments to make it easier on you. Okay. I don't want to talk another 20 minutes, so I'm going to cut this one short, even though it's longer than I intended. But I just say all that to say, ask God to give you the ability to treat everyone with kindness and respect, even the ones who never treated you with any, if God requires it of you. And pray God doesn't require it in those hard times. Because sometimes he's not going to make you do it with everybody. But he does want you to forgive everyone. If you can't do anything else, forgive. And I already told you, he'll help you do that. So, your, your cards are stacked in your favor either way. God bless you and be encouraged. It's not always going to hurt. Because one thing you can also ask is, Lord, Take all this hurt out and heal my heart. I am a witness to the fact he will. God bless you.